Okay. I'm Corbin, and I'm talking about uh, increasing uh, performance in internal combustion engines. Uh, just a little bit of background about that. Uh, there are many methods to increase uh, internal combustion engines. The three most popular are nitrous oxide, which is basically uh, you are sh inserting or squirting nitrous oxide into the cylinders, which is a gas, and it creates a bigger explosion in the engine, therefore creating more power. And then the second method for increasing uh, performance is it's called all motor or naturally aspirated. It's just you're basically having a bigger motor to create more power. Um, and the third and final way to increase performance is by force induction. And force induction is basically, as the name applies, you're forcing more air into the engine than it would normally obtain by uh, compressing it. And there are two types of forced induction methods, which are uh, superchargers and turbochargers. And my fact claim, fact claim is that using forced induction in an internal combustion engine is a superior way to increase engine performance. And there are three main reasons why I believe this. One, forced induction is efficient. Two, it is uh, widely available on many vehicles. And three, it's cost effective. Um, in efficiency, uh, Force induction methods normally have a rate of about 70 to 80 percent efficient, which for anything is good considering uh, parasitic loss, which is lost by friction and just lost through energy absorbed into the materials. And then a quote by Herman Heareth from his book, In Charging the Internal Combustion Engine, he says, in passenger cars as well, this engine configuration is gaining increased performance due to its extraordinary extra efficiency. And the second reason why it's efficient is that forced induction offers a higher power to fuel consumption ratio, which means that for the same amount of horsepower per a certain engine, a forced induction engine will use less fuel than, say, a naturally aspirated engine due to the larger amount of air being forced into it, therefore increasing its volumetric efficiency. And the higher volumetric efficiency, the more efficient the engine is. The second reason that force induction is superior is that it's w widely available. It can, uh, a supercharger or turbocharger can be fitted to almost any internal combustion engine, as opposed to some engines which do not do well in naturally aspirated or uh, being in injected with nitrous oxide. Um, Force induction is normally ideal for small sized engines, but can also be used with large engines, but it's not as common due to the fact that large engines already make enough power. And then, the force induction is cost effective. It's cost effective not only, it's for two reasons. One, it can give twice the horsepower for a certain engine, and it generally costs about $2,000 to $4,000 to uh, turbocharge an engine, depending on the engine and all the uh, accessories needed. Um, a quote from Todd Curlis uh, from his book simply titled Turbochargers says, you can safely raise the power of an engine 50 to 100 percent with a turbocharger. Turbocharging also does not require extensive modification, therefore that's another reason the cost is low as compared to other methods. And you basically just bolt on the system to the engine and you have power, uh, instant power. And finally, uh, another quote from Todd Curlis. It says, a turbo V6 can give nearly as good acceleration and performance as a V8 equivalent, but, weight, but weighs only 60 to 80 pounds less. So this also, that quote also shows that it, a turbocharged engine will weigh less it will give the same amount of performance and it will increase the uh, efficiency. And in conclusion, I would like to say that no other system can uh, compete with this. The other systems all have their drawbacks as they're more expensive in many applications as like upkeep and anything else, any other price factor when uh, using the <coughs> system. Thank you.
tấm thẻ All right, uh, the propositions clearly identified. I like the background information that you set up first. The supporting points are laid out uh, for us to follow pretty easily. You had good internal signposts when you got to the structure there. Uh, one of the questions that comes up in my head is the question of efficiency and why it's so important. Uh, you give us a, a quote that uh, tries to explain it, but I'm not sure it still uh, gives us a significant reason for why we would want to use uh, turbochargers as opposed to something that would be less efficient, for instance, or uh, fuel induction. Um, the um, you, you had some statistical information, uh, which was fine. A couple of authorities that you're citing. Uh, the information about costs seems to be largely assumed, and I think you probably have data on this, but I didn't hear any citations on any of that information. The one piece of uh, testimony that you gave there really had to do with power issues and not with the uh, cost issues. Uh, like I said, the structure is pretty easy to follow. I thought you did a good job explaining ideas and concepts pretty well. Sometimes it sounds a little bit more informative in nature. Uh, the bigger issue would be why is there a need for doing this, how important this is. I think we need a little bit more of that in the argument so that uh, we can tell whether or not it's uh, even worth the, you know, what the controversy on this is. If I'm considering increasing the uh, combustion in my engine or the power that I'm going to be getting and I'm looking at the alternatives that are available available to me. Well, how many people do that? How significant is that need? I think that would create a little bit more justification for listening to the argument, too. All right. Thank you.